we're really gonna dive deep into hair growth and retention, the whole nine yards. I'm super excited. If you are new here, I am Shars Hair Banks. We focus on all things healthy hair, healthy lifestyle, and beauty. But remember, beauty is only skin deep, so remember to love yourself. Yes. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. 2023 was a good year. 2024 is going to be an even better year. It's going to be your year too. So I hope all of your goals come to fruition. Since I big chopped and completely butchered my haircut in 2021, Ooh, I have learned so much about my hair. What works for me or you may not work for our next door neighbor. And so I think it's really important to know and learn your specific hair. Apart from underlying health issues, anyone from 1A to 4C can have hair reaching down to their butt crack if he, she, or they choose. With that being said, December 2024, your girl will have her hair long to her thong. <laughs> My hair will be tailbone length in December 2024 by following these 10 tips that I'm sharing with you that's actually helped me reach my current waist length. Actually, I'm not really sure what my hair measures. I'm not sure if I'm like mid-back or waist length. I don't know. Help you girl out. What? Am I waist length? Am I mid-back? Where am I? Either way it goes, this is the longest my hair has ever been. Like ever and so we're not gatekeeping none over here okay nothing i don't think i have to say it but this is going to be a long video but trust me it'll be worth it the tips that i'm going to share then we separate into two hair growth and lymph retention let's be clear these are two separate things but they do complement each other so grab your notebook grab your pen grab a little snack or snack and with that being said cute intro Before I start, I already know it. I already know it. Somebody's gonna be in the comments like with some, oh, it's genetics. Okay, yeah, yeah. Genetics, it does play a role. It does play a part when it comes to hair growth, how much we shed, how often we shed, our hair color, hair texture. Yes, that's true. But let me introduce you to epigenetics. Epigenetics is how behaviors and our environment can cause changes that affect the way our genes work. So let's be clear, it doesn't rearrange your DNA. It just changes how your DNA reacts. People love saying, oh, you can't change how fast your hair grows. But I'm here to tell you, you are wrong. You can, and that's where epigenetics plays a role. Let's take shedding, for example. So shedding is a natural part of the hair growth process. It's literally when your hair falls from your hair follicles that is shedding. Whether it's behavioral stressors, environmental stressors, it can affect how often your hair sheds. When someone's stressing, you can typically see it. Chunks of hair is coming out. You're stressing, that's stress. Whether it's behavioral stressors or environmental stressors, it can increase shedding, which we've already established that it is a part of the hair growth process. With that same logic, behaviors can in fact influence our hair growth, which means you can indeed speed up hair growth. Boom, mic drop. <laughs> and it all starts with nutrition. This is the most undervalued tip, okay? Having a well-balanced nutritious diet is not only important to like hair growth, but it's important for our overall well-being. Our body is in constant survival mode. It's literally built that way. We have mechanisms that heals our body. We have organs that communicate with each other. It's a whole system. What we've been taught is that our hair is not as important in comparison to the rest of our like organs and our body. And so based on duties, it's going to be the last that's going to be factored in for nutrients. And although our hair is is dead it still requires sustenance for the process of hair growth we need protein vitamins minerals all types of sustenance and nutrients that need to be sent to the scalp i'm like 85 percent plant-based i eat lots of fruits veggies i try to shy away from junk food or foods that's like really processed and even then with my newly found lifestyle i still am lacking i have blood work done and my vitamin and 
electrolytes were like super low like they were low 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 like flow right up and you know what this tends to be the case for a lot of african-american women me on the other hand i'm deficient deficient like think of where the low is i was like beyond low to the point where she was like if i continue on this path it can lead to cancer it can lead to so many issues because vitamin d it's really important for a lot of the mechanisms that we have in our body. Anyways, I wish I can say just eat more veggies, eat more fruits, but even then that's not enough. So supplements, which is another way to get like your vitamins and minerals, whether it's like pill, powder, liquid form, is definitely suggested. I was taking a multivitamin that generally for the geriatric community, but it actually has red dye number 40 and that doesn't align with like my newly found lifestyle. And so I stopped taking vitamins all together, which in hindsight, I really shouldn't have done that. I really should have just taken something, very much something. And I came across Murray Roots. So first I used to take like her probiotics, uh, her zinc, the chlorophyll, like the mint chlorophyll is amazing. And then I came across like the multivitamin. Apparently it went viral. I'm just like, where the heck was I during this time? She has a multivitamin that also includes Lustreba. So Lustreba, she is that girl. So I did my own research. Many of their patients, they showed results with taking Lustreva by itself. So if I can take Lustreva and the vitamin, oh, I'm Gucci. As you can see here, I don't know, it's empty, it's empty. Um, I finished one month of the Mary Roots Liquid Morning Multivitamin plus hair growth. So it says here that it's clinically shown to help grow thicker and fuller hair improve wrinkles and fine lines and support healthy skin all of that as you can see the skin oh she's skinning okay she's skinning she's skinning so i don't have pics to share and compare since i'm committing to my new hair growth journey i'm gonna have pics i'm gonna have videos i'm gonna have the whole nine yards i think it'll be really fun i'm super excited to see like these results so i am gonna say this the price she she's a little on the expensive side okay that's why i had to do my research because i'm gonna spend my coins on this i need it to work this is not sponsored i purchased this with my own little coins okay this is my money right here so in case you wanted to join me on this challenge i did reach out to mary rose to see if there's like some type of discount code that you and i can use us and so they so graciously gave me a code that you and i can use so it would be in the description box as well as the comment section for easy accessibility. Another thing that's really helped me when it comes to nutrition is drinking butterfly pea flower tea, uh, fenugreek tea, rosemary tea, clove tea. And sometimes if I'm feeling a little funky, I'll mix it all together or just some type of like variation of those four. These teas, especially rosemary, have been linked to stopping DHT, which is a hormone known for hair loss. So I'll drink it like in the morning, nightcap. And I do drink them without sugar. I have a bitter tongues and I'm used to the taste, but um, by all means, if you can't drink tea without some type of sweetness to it, honey that thing up. The practice of scalp massages started way back in India. They use this as like a medicinal treatment. It's a part of like this whole body, holistic treatment. It's really interesting. You should look it up to your research. So our scalp is at the top of our bodies, right? Like it's the most northern part of our entire being and because of gravity and the anatomy of our tiny little vessels it's really hard for our scalp sometimes to get all the nutrients that it needs the nutrients and oxygen that it needs and this is where scalp massages come into play it increases the blood flow to our scalp and what's in our blood other than the nutrients and the substance and the oxygen that we need for proper hair growth that was aforementioned and i know it was blood it's recommended to do scalp massages at least three times a week either using like your natural oils or the sebum from your scalp you can do it with like teas um you can use oil in january 2023 it's so crazy that i'm saying that because here we are january 2024 a whole year later i sprayed rosemary tea on my scalp three times throughout the week for an entire month and i massaged it in really getting into my scalp on average y'all my hair grows half an inch a month tell me how i'm going an entire inch an entire inch that month it literally doubled my hair growth not sure why i only did it one time given the fact that it produced higher results but i will be doing it every week 
massaging my scalp with rosemary tea. I'll probably do like a tea rinse or something while I'm deep conditioning. We'll see, I'll figure out the details later. But for right now, we're, I'm just showing tips. As for oiling, I typically make my own concoction using castor oil, tea tree oil, um, clove oil, peppermint oil, rosemary oil. But lately, I've actually been using the Basque and Lather Scalp Skimpulator. I cannot say that. Scalp Stimulator. My scalp doesn't feel heavy because of the type of oil that she uses in this. Um, it's grapeseed oil, hemp seed oil, peppermint oil, and rosemary. There goes that rosemary again. Everyone knows about rosemary because rosemary is good. Yeah, it's definitely lighter than my concoction and that's okay too. Um, both oils, whether you do it yourself, purchase an oil, it's good because of the ingredient. Like Neo said, it is a movement by itself, but it's a force when it's together. You really can't go wrong when it comes to any of these oils. You just want to make sure that you have a carrier oil. So that's like grapeseed, olive oil, Jamaican black castor oil. And you can mix any of like the oils together to make your own concoction. Or if you want to have the convenience of just having the oil already pre-made, you can, you know, buy an oil. You already know where to find this. And I'm not gonna lie, full transparency, when it comes to oiling the scalp, I'm really not consistent. Hear ye, hear ye, I will be committing myself to these scalp massages because, I mean, at the end of the day, it feels so good on the scalp. Like, I would have the inclination to do a scalp massage and literally sit there for an entire half an hour just massaging my scalp because it just feels so darn good. And I mean, fingers, like using my fingers, it's all good and all, it's it's cool. But using a scalp massager, a scalp massager ten, feels 10 times better. Cause I mean, when you compare our little fingers, like our 10 fingers to these multiple fingers, we're gonna call it fingers for the sake of this video cause I'm not really sure what these are called. The pointy fingers can really get into the scalp and you really, ooh, Oh, even doing this on my hands feels so good. So it's like really good for like regular massaging, but when it comes to shampooing, oh, this gets the scalp clean. And so that brings me to my next tip, a clean scalp. Healthy hair begets healthy scalp. Wait, healthy scalp begets healthy hair. Not only is nutrition important for a healthy scalp, but keeping it clean is that much more important. Your scalp is skin. It's an extension of your face. It's just, it just has a different name to it. When we neglect it, problems start to rise, such as like itchy scalp, dry scalp, uh, psoriasis, sores. A lot can be said about the internal health by looking at the scalp and looking at the hair in general. If a person has autoimmune disease, there tends to be like soreness and redness on the scalp. So if you're ever unsure about anything, consult a medical professional, more specifically a trichologist. If you take care of yourself, it will show in your hair. And drink more water. That was my alarm to get water, hold on. So yeah, that's internal. When it comes to external, you want to make sure that the scalp is clean. I don't shampoo my hair until my hair has been saturated with water at least for five minutes. That's when I'm going with shampoo and at first I'll massage it into my scalp and then that's when I'll finally go in with my scalp massager. I'll use it in gentle like circular motions. The silicone bristles, that's what it's called, silicone bristles. It allows for like better contact, really helping to break down, build up, and getting dead skin off or definitely invest in a scalp massager once again you know where to find it so those are the tips that i have for hair growth now let's talk about length retention because like i said before our hair is gonna grow the reason why you're probably not seeing the growth is because it's breaking off before it gets to that point which means as our hair grows whether it's in height or in length if you're not seeing it grow out, or if you're not seeing it grow down, it's because it's breaking off. So whatever the negligence that's causing you know, our hair to be stagnant can easily be fixed with my next tips, which has helped me retain lots of length. Number one, my number one is always going to be protective style. Protective styles are hairstyles that we wear to protect our hair from manipulation, environmental stressors that can cause like breakage. And when I say protective style correctly, I mean according to your hair type, i.e. 
how thick it is, the porosity, which we'll talk about that later. If you look at a strand of hair, if you cut that hair in half and you look at it straight down the middle, that is what we mean by the thickness of your hair strand. Taking the actual hair itself, like if we compare it to thread, if it's thicker than thread, then you consider to have thick hair. If it's skinnier than thread, then it's considered thin hair. If it's the same like thickness or diameter of a thread, then you have medium strength. For instance, with me, she's very much thin. Like if you were to pull one strand, yeah, that's see-through. You can't even see what I'm pulling. It's see-through. My hair is super fragile. It's easy to tangle. And these are typically characteristics of thin strands. So due to my hair's fragility, uh, wearing extensions, it's going to do more harm than good. So the best protective style for my hair is using my own hair to protect itself. No extensions, no heat would be best. And low to no tension, also no tension would be best. My go-to protective style used to be twists. Like I would rock twists. After my butchered chop of 2021 doing that wolf cut, um, I used to rock those twists like nobody's business. Somebody actually asked me, do you ever wear wigs? I'm just like, why? My twists are naturally beautiful. They, they look amazing. They're juicy. They're moisturized. You should be admiring my twists. How dare you? And she had locks like, I don't see you covering your locks with, with wigs. What? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, anyways, I went on a tangent. I used to be married to the twist. I am no longer married to the twist. Because they were small and they were literally twisting amongst itself when I went to wash my hair and wet it to make wash days that much more difficult. I graduated from twist to wearing medium size box plaits using my natural hair. When I went from twists to plaits, I really noticed a difference in the length retention. I can wash, deep condition, moisturize my hair all while wearing these medium-sized plaits. I noticed more growth and length retention. So I used to redo them like once a month, but I'm gonna see if I can stretch it out to two months. I just think that the medium size is a sweet spot. It's small enough for products to penetrate, but it's not too small where it will like lock on me. All right, so let's talk about moisture protein balance. Balance is key. Dry hair breaks easy. Think of it like spaghetti, like a dry noodle. If you take the dry noodle and just bend it just a little, they're easy to snap. But when the noodles are wet, it's more malleable. But you can also have too much moisture. You know, when you overcook the noodles and they start to be all mushy, the same thing can happen to our hair. So balance is key. When it comes to keeping that moisture balance, it's important to know our hair type. So we talked about hair diameter, now we're gonna talk about hair porosity. Porosity in short is how well our hair is able to absorb and retain moisture due to the position of our hair's cuticles. So there are three types of porosity. There is high, medium, and low porosity. High porosity hair, when you look at the cuticles, they're raised. So if this is the hair, the cuticles are raised. When it comes to low porosity, the cuticles are basically shut. Medium porosity is just elevated just a little bit. Generally speaking, you can't really tell a person's like porosity just by looking at it, but there are tests that can be done. This one is just by taking a strand of your hair and putting it into a body of water. If it sinks easily, then you are high porosity. If it just stays at the top, then you are low porosity. For the longest time I thought it was low porosity, I still do sometimes think that because of the way my hair reacts. But the thing about medium porosity is you have some characteristics of low porosity and High porosity. The reason we should know our hair porosity is to choose better products based on our hair type. Let's talk products. There's so many products out there and there's so many brands to choose. Well, how do I know what to choose? For me, at first it was a trial and error. I would try things. There were only a few that had me like, yo, oh, that's good. If it says moisturizing, I'm gonna grab it. If it has honey, glycerin, aloe, Oh, she likes that type of stuff. We're going to talk a little bit about like what type of products you want to look for based on your hair porosity. If you have high porosity, once the moisture is in there, once you get all that moisture in your strands, because it's so easy to lose, you want to make sure that you trap it in there. So you want to trap it with heavy butters, heavy oils at the moisturizing. I would say layering for you guys are great. For low porosity hair, you definitely want to shy away. Shy away from the butters 
and heavy oils you want things that's really going to attract moisture to really pull in the moisture so things like hyaluronic acid honey and like i said before since i am medium porosity for y'all you medium porosity you can really pick from either side i prefer light oils over heavy butters and when it comes to moisturizing products i personally i like i love honey i have been using tgin my hair loves this brand but i'm completely honest i think this is good for all hair types low medium high porosity try it out let me know how you like it all right so on to the next deep conditioning i am a true advocate for deep conditioning the hair every wash day so i like to wash my hair every week every single week and washing my hair every week i also make sure i deep condition deep conditioning is super important it's so different from like regular conditioner deep conditioner really penetrates deep into the hair shaft because most of the time when you're using deep conditioner you're using heat to activate its ingredients depending on what i'm doing uh, it would de determine my heat source i have a hooded dryer if i want to set a hooded dryer for like 20 minutes i would but i also have a deep conditioning cap so i'll put this in the microwave for i think a minute and a half and i put that on my head for like an hour or so and then also when i started deep conditioning weekly the absorption of the products works so much better after deep conditioning it's like it's really been prepped for that next step me and finger detangling love hate relationship most of you don't know this but combs they're meant to remove shed hair they're not meant for detangling and you will use like a detangling brush to detangle the hair to make it easier i have been using the unbrush as the easiest detangling brush out there 90 percent of my detangling has been cut down and because the bristles are malleable it's not stiff and hard like a comb where it'll just like rip through the hair it moves so if there's like any type of force being done is going to move with finger detangling is always going to be your best option because you literally feel the knots you can feel the tangles you can easily just like or gently gently unravel or detangle any knots that's there without ripping through your hair so i stress this when it comes to length retention uh, finger detangling really helped me a lot and it also helped my volume what's the difference between a haircut and a trim so a trim cuts one fourth of an inch, a haircut cuts one fourth of an inch. Like literally there is no difference. The action taken is cutting, you're literally cutting your hair. So a cut is a cut, whether you're calling it a trim, a haircut, a cut is a cut. How much is cut, how often it's cut is totally up to you. It's based on your hair's condition, your hair goals. I think it's best to get our hair cut professionally, let the professionals handle that. I always suggest going to a professional to get it done once a year, at least once a year. Really and truly, the only cure to a split end is to cut it. The only cure to a fairy knot, which is like those tiny, tiny nuts, not nuts, the tiny tiny knots is to cut it cut it you, you, you need to cut it the reason why you want to cut it before it's too late is because when it comes to split hair it travels so it will be right here it's like so small and then as time progresses as you do it more and more and more the split travels up your hair and where you need it to only cut one fourth of an inch now you're cutting two inches because you waited too late to just cut it be like frozen and just let it go at the time although i regretted you know cutting my hair that big chop of 2021 i think that really set me up for success after i did that cut my curls were popping my hair was healthy a good cut will set you up for success it really truly lays that foundation yeah and actually in hindsight it had so much bounce to it um i look at pictures i'm just like dang i really snapped with that haircut i didn't like it i thought i messed up but when i look back at the pictures i'm like yo i really did that cut i wish i enjoyed my hair at that stage because i feel like i really didn't appreciate it wash days were still super simple the tangling was super simple because it was short you know now that my hair is super long it's doubled the time that it takes for me to wash the tangle style 
products. I'm going through it a lot more. Uh, so yeah, enjoy your hair at every stage. So that's a little side like tip or suggestion. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of want to do it again because if I grew it out before, I can grow it out again. I don't know. Should I cut it again after I reach my limp? Mm, we'll see. I have been trying to cut my hair like every six to eight weeks on a waxing moon. I'll do like a search and destroy method where I'm literally taking every like piece of my hair and looking through and just cutting. I will say this, it has helped me be consistent. This, this whole healthy hair routine, you gotta be consistent. We'll talk about that later. Since we were just talking about trimming, it's important to have really good shears. Not like the scissors that you use for do-it-yourself project. Shears, the blades are different. They're sharper, so when you cut the hair, it's not creating damage at the ends of the hair. There are certain types of scissors that if you were to cut the hair, it creates little tears. So it's kind of like you're cutting off damaged ends and then you're creating more damage. It defeats the purpose. So you wanna get good shears if you're cutting your hair yourself. Of course, if you're going to a professional, they have the professional grade shear. Now these shears are like really good. I got these from Amazon, you know, we're fine. Though. Silk, silk bonnets, silk headscarves, silk pillowcases. Silk is really soft and gentle on our hair strands. Friction causes damage. Silk lessens the friction. We talked about this already, but I'm gonna mention this again because why not? Okay, why not? It's still a tool. Uh, you wanna get yourself a good scalp massager. There's so many scalp massagers out there. You can't really go wrong with a scalp massager. If you don't have a hood or dryer, think about investing in a conditioning cap. Everything that I have discussed with you, it's a part of my healthy hair routine. So you need to find a healthy hair routine. Find what works for you. If it's not working and you can see that it's not working, you're just doing it because it's convenient, don't do that. You play yourself, don't play yourself. Time reveals all. What you reap, you will sow. And any other cliche that you can think of that pertains to putting in the work and watching uh, the results unfold. <laughs> if you love your hair, your hair will love you back. But in doing so, the results is not going to happen overnight. July 2021, I cut my hair. Some pieces was here, some pieces was here. And although I've had many cuts in between, whether it's a little bit or a lot, I was able to grow it back. Yeah, so with having a routine, my focus wasn't growing my hair. My focus was more so having healthy hair. And shifting my focus to having healthy hair allowed me to then see the length. Especially with kinky coily hair, it is very deceiving. But when you pull that bad boy and you see them inches, baby. So with anything that requires growth, it takes time and effort and consistency. Journey to tailbone length. I can't believe I'm saying that, but wow, um, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there and it's gonna be super exciting. And I would love for you to join me on this journey. If you have any best practices, please share it with me. Share it with me, share it with our community because we're here, we're all about growth and I wanna grow with you guys and I want you to grow with me. Yeah, cool. Tailbone length, here I come, baby.